G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Throwback Thursday edition of a Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in today's lesson, by request, I'll be teaching you how to play Kiss Me by Ed Sheeran. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you two different ways of playing this song. An easier open chord version, and then secondly, the way that Ed Sheeran tends to play it live. After teaching you the rhythm, I'm also going to teach you how to play the electric guitar solos that are in the song. So let's get started with the simple open chord version. And if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Now this song at its core is quite simple. There's only three chord structures that we really need to learn. The first chord structure is the toughest one, and it's going to be played throughout the whole verse and the choruses. Starting with the first chord structure, we have seven chords. We're going to start with a D. And then we're going to go to an A7 sus4. So from this shape, you'll just lift your index in your middle, and you'll put your index on the second fret of the fourth string, and strum from the fifth string onwards, and that's A7 sus4. Then our third chord is going to be a B minor 11. So from our second chord again, we'll just lift our index finger. We'll keep this ring finger on that third fret of the second string. And you'll place your index finger now on the 2nd fret of the 5th string and your middle finger will go on the 2nd fret of the 3rd string. And you'll have your 4th string and your 1st string open. So that's B minor 11. Then we're going to go back to the A7 sus4 and then we're going to go to a G and then we're going to go back to a D and then our last chord in this chord structure is the A7 sus4. Now you'll notice that the A7 sus4 is in brackets and that's just going to mean that this A7 sus4 is actually a passing chord so it's not actually held out for very long. Now you'll be happy to know that the strumming pattern that we're going to use is a simple down up 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 down up. The trickiest part about this chord structure is going to be where the chords are going to change and a lot of them happen on the up beats not on the down beats. So you'll see all the timing up here in the annotation and this will really help. Just to clarify as well, for each of my counts, so a one or a end, I'm doing a down up motion within that one section. So one and two and like that. So we'll start with our D and this is gonna be held out until the four beat where we're gonna to go to the A7 plus four, which is our passing chord and this is just going to be for a down up, so it's going to be really quick. And then we're going to change to our B minor 11 chord on the end beat after the 4. So it'll sound like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And then we keep going with that B minor 11. For that next count of 4, again on that end beat is when we're going to go back to this passing A7 sus4 chord. And on the end beat after the 4 is where we're going to change to our G chord. So from the start we have 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and... Again, make sure you're looking at the annotations here to see where the chords are changing in terms of the timing. Then we're going to go back to a D chord on the end beat after the 4. And then our last chord is going to be another passing chord, the A7 sus4. But this passing chord is now going to be on the end beat after the 4 here. So in a full loop, this is what it's going to sound like. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4.
and then again we'll just keep looping. So that's probably as hard as it's gonna get for the rhythm in this song, that verse and chorus chord structure. Finally, the last layer that we're gonna to add to this chord progression is par muting. And this is a really vital part about the way that Ed Sheeran will play it live. Now, it's not 100% necessary if you were to play it without palm muting, that's still fine, but you will find that you don't have that stripped back feel that the actual song has if you don't use palm muting. To palm mute, you're gonna take the fleshy bit of your palm and you're gonna lightly rest it right on the edge of the bridge when you're strumming. So you're gonna be almost pivoting your strumming hand from that palm section. Now, if you're palm muting too far in, you won't hear anything at all. It'll be muted. But once you're right on the bridge, that's when you're gonna get that muted sound. So once we add the palm muting onto the chord progression, we're gonna have this. One and two and three and four and Now it might be a lot to take in, so if you're having problems then just start without the palm muting and without the accents, just get the timing and the chords right and then slowly add the palm muting once you're feeling comfortable with the timing. Now we get to the pre-chorus and the pre-chorus is a whole lot easier. We have G, then we have an A chord shape, then we go to D, and then we go to our B minor 11 chord. Now each chord is just going to be played for a full bar. There's no chord changes on upbeats here or anything like that. In terms of accents though, we can add accents on the 2 and the 4 beat. That's it for the first line and then for the second line it's G and then A and we're just going to hold that A out. It's not going to be played for a strumming pattern. So without palm muting, the pre-chorus will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two But of course, to add that extra layer of dynamic, you can palm mute this pre-chorus, which will sound like this. Now the bridge just has six chords. We're gonna start with the A, then we're gonna to go to a B flat diminished seven. So from our A chord shape, you're just gonna leave your ring finger where it is. So the second fret of the second string. And then your index finger will go on the first fret of the fifth string. And your middle finger will go on the second fret of the fourth string. And you're gonna strum from the fifth string onwards. You don't wanna hit that top sixth string. That's B flat diminished seven. Then B minor 11, then back to A. And then we're gonna play a G bar chord. So this G bar chord is the same shape as an F bar chord, just two frets up. And our last chord is G minor, so it's just a G chord, but we're gonna lift our middle finger. That, that, that's G minor. We're gonna mix up the strumming pattern here. It's gonna be a tiny bit different. We're gonna go down, 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 up. And in succession, down, 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 up, down, 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 down. Up. Now up in the annotations, each chord is just going to have a little number above it and that's just going to indicate the amount of strumming patterns you'll need to play for that chord. So all together, the bridge will sound like this. Down, down. Now I'm going to take you to the studio version slash the way that Ed Sheeran actually likes to play it live. And this is just going to involve more bar chords slash power chords. All the timing and the rhythm is going to remain exactly the same. So let's start with the verse and chorus chord structure, which is the most difficult part of the rhythm. We're going to start with the D power chord here. So it's just index finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string, ring and picky on the seventh fret of the fourth and third strings. Everything else is going to be muted. So your second and first strings muted, and so is your first string. 
So you just want to pick the fifth, fourth, and third strings, those ones. Your second chord or the passing chord is going to be an A bar chord. Then we're going to go to a B minor seven chord, like that. And then we're going to go back to our passing chord. Then we're going to go down to a G chord, G bar chord, like that. And then back to our D power chord. And finally, our last chord is a D slash A. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our index finger from this D power chord and move it up one string to the sixth string. So your bass note is that fifth fret on the sixth string. And that fifth string will just be muted because your index finger will lie on top of it like that. So that's the last chord, which is also another passing chord. Now, if you want a more in-depth explanation of the timing for this verse structure, then just refer to the easier version where I explained it more in depth. Basically, I still have the annotation of the timing up here. Now, one thing to add is that for these bar chords, you can just really focus on the bass notes of those chords, otherwise known basically as the power chord. So if we're playing the G bar chord here, you can strum all of the strings, but if you wanna to stick to the top three strings, which just makes it a power chord, then you can do that as well. And that's what Ed Sheeran does quite a lot as well. This verse and chorus structure will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Make sure that you just master the timing first and then add the par muting once you feel more comfortable with all the rest. Then for the pre-chorus, we have G, then we go A, then we go to D, and then we go to our B minor seven. And this is gonna be that same down up, down up, down up strumming pattern, but there's no changes on the upbeats. Each chord is just held for one full bar. That's it for the first line, and then the second line is G, and then to the A and that A is held out. Again, you can concentrate more on the bass notes of these bar chords, essentially just turning them into power chords if you want to. And the pre-chorus for the harder version will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one. Now we get to the bridge of this harder version and it's quite simple. We're gonna start on this A and then we're going to go to an A slash A sharp. So from this chord position, all you're gonna do is move your index finger up one fret. But you're only gonna be playing these top four strings. You're gonna mute the first and second string. That's the second chord. Then we have B minor seven, then back to A, and then we go back to a G bar chord. And then our final chord is G minor. So you just lift your middle finger, that's G minor. Now the strumming pattern for this bridge is going to go down, 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 up. Up in the annotations, you'll see a little number above each chord and that will just indicate the amount of strumming patterns you'll need to play for each chord. And the bridge is just going to sound like this. All right, so now I'm gonna be playing through the two different versions, the easier rhythm version and the harder rhythm version. I'm gonna have a vocal track on top for both. So feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to practice, play along too, and see how you go.
to help you give it up so kiss me like you want to be loved you want to be loved you want to be loved this feels like falling in love falling in love but falling in love kiss me like you want to be loved you want to be loved you want to be loved this feels like falling in love falling in love falling in love be sure to head over to guitar zero to hero guys to pick up my free guitar ebook hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any updates. It would mean the world if you hit that like button, leave your thoughts, comments and questions and a request for Throwback Thursday below and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers. Watching the sunrise replace the moon How would you feel If I told you I loved you It's just something that I want to do